Welcome to Get Green, Northwest Indiana, your home for lawn care solutions with Steve Daly. Each podcast, you'll learn the secret tips to growing healthy green grass and best practice solutions for watering, weed and feed, aeration, and mowing. Here are your hosts, Steve Daly and Jim Jano. All right, let's talk about growth regulators. Okay, PGRs. Okay. <laughs> gross, gross grass regulators. <laughs> no, today we're talking about grass growth regulators. It's an gross exciting new, say? although you say it's not so new, but it's new to homeowners. Well, it's you know it, it's something where most companies are not running grass growth regulators or PGRs really or plant growth regulators on lawns. Um, what is it? What What is a grass growth regulator, also called a lawn growth regulator or even growth regulator lawn? That's a, what is That's it? a lot of different things. It, it is a lot of different things. But really, all, all it's doing is restricting upgrowth, enhancing root system. Um, what you want to do is basically, especially in the spring when turf is going insane, and growing, you know, so fast that the plants are using up all their reserves, you slow it down. You make it so it's not growing up so fast, and and it has a lot of benefits to it. Um, to me, it seems like that means less mowing. It will. It will reduce the mowing for a short, you know, probably a short period of time. I mean, you, if you're not creating so much upgrowth, then you're going to have less mowing, yes. Um, now well, That sounds good my, to me my, because ever since you <laughs> took over my lawn, I got no time to do anything. All I do is cut. Well, I think earlier in the year we discovered that you didn't just cut it enough. Well, <laughs> you might have to come in one I'm going to give days. you a hard time about it back <laughs> a few podcasts ago. It's a jungle. Um, <laughs> you know, but yeah, this year I'm going to work on slowing things down a little bit in the spring. Um, we have I, something I think... exciting to announce that it goes along with your 50th anniversary that we're going to talk about at the end of this podcast. But for first, let's talk more about there's a lot of advantages to grass growth regulators or what is it that you, the professionals call it again? Uh, P- PGR, plant growth regulator. Got it. Okay. Now, the one that we're going to use... Um, or one that, that's, you know, good for turf is one that's called T-Nex or uh, Primo Max. Um, it's one that will slow down things. It, it enhances the root system, um, keeps us from having all this top growth, builds the plant, say, horizontally as opposed to vertically, helps spread out rhizomes, does things like that. Let's look at the individual benefits because the list of benefits to the homeowner is long and it's pretty impressive. But what, what's number one? Okay, first we have less mowing. And for those of us that would rather enjoy a lawn than mow the lawn, but I still enjoy mowing it, but just not so often, yeah. it will mean less mowing. But what else does it give us? Is well, it, it's going to make, it's, it, by, by retaining it and keeping it from growing so hard, um, it'll give you better color. Really? Um, yeah, and it should generally keep like the growth rates more in intact, so that uh, say your different grass types aren't growing faster so much. You know, you're not going to have. It's like in the spring, a lot of time you'll see your different growth rates of say rye grasses versus blue grasses versus tall fescues. This will control that more to give it a more uniform growth look. Now, when you go to a ballpark, and this technology, actually, you mentioned it's been around for a while. It just, for the application of homeowners, you're, you're, they're starting to find a lot of benefits to the homeowner. But it's been in ballparks for a while. Is that why going to a baseball game, the grass seems so green? I, you know, I mean, it's generally more uniform grass type, too. I mean, they, you know, you're not in a, in a ball field. You're not going to have a different variety of grasses. Um if you are slowing its growth rate, yeah, it's going to have better color. Uh, but you have that in, in your list of benefits of, of using uh, grass growth uh, regulators is that you have a more uniform lawn. And 
Yeah. That's because and, the grass is growing and hopefully it'll wider. Give you more, more uniform color, but you're not you're not necessarily going to make a rye grass look like a bluegrass. It's not going to change the fact that a rye grass is a lighter, sheenier green than a bluegrass. You know, so is it going to provide better uniformity? Yes, in your color, uh, but it's not going to be perfect. You know, what I mean, because if you've got a variety grass type lawn. As I said in a previous podcast, if you you know you can stand on the second story of a of a house and look down, and you will see all the different grass types in a lawn if it's a mixed lawn, which you is will. desirable. Yeah, it, a mixed lawn is desirable for a few reasons. Um, one will be disease resistance. Uh, you don't want your grass to be all one type of grass. Um, because if you get a disease, it can wipe out your whole lawn. Your whole lawn. Yeah. Wow. Yep. So you want it to you have some variety to it. Now, the next advantage you have down, you're not so quick to hype up, but I've read a lot of people claim that, that the, the lawn growth regulators mean fewer weeds. But you were a little skeptical about over-hyping that. Why is that? Well, uh, I mean, as the lawn densens, yeah, you're going to have fewer weeds no matter what. Um as long as you're controlling them to get them out originally and you're fertilizing to fill in the lawn as the density improves, you're going to have fewer weeds. Now, there's certain weed controls that actually use growth regulation in them to be effective. So really? I'm not necessarily skeptical that they work. I'm just, you know, trying to... Uh, you're careful of making claims that might mislead somebody. Yeah. I mean, yeah. My, growth regulator for for grass is not necessarily controlling the weed but as the lawn density improves that's what's controlling the weed well it makes sense i mean if you have if there's no place for the weeds to weed seeds to fall and grow then they're not going to grow right the denser your lawn is the less chance for germination so the weeds the can't compete with the grass correct yeah i mean but if you're not one to care for your lawn and you've got a bunch of weeds in it well yeah the weeds are going to predominate. Well, and another benefit that I think we kind of covered is it makes your lawn thicker. Yeah. Density improves. That's, you know, I mean, the horizontal spread of rhizomes will improve the density of the lawn. You know, and, and I love being able to walk on a lawn barefooted and a thicker lawn definitely kind of gives you that cush. Yeah. The, the, the cool. And, and, and the higher you mow it gives you that cush. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've, if I have the right growth regulators, that means I can get by every, what, three weeks before cutting? Oh, I, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. Um, maybe. It just depends on how that works. But generally, if you spray a growth regulator, it's buying you, a, you know, it, it's a three to four week longevity. So it will slow it down for about that period of time. Now, does that mean you're mowing every... Eight days, ten days. I don't know. That's basically yeah. it needs to be cut when it needs it, to be cut. It needs to be cut when it needs to be cut. I can't. And you'll determine. let me know if I'm falling behind on that because yeah. you're not shy about that. Yeah, I'll tell you. Okay. Now the the <laughs> next thing is is one that we had some real issues with last year. Last year was the year of hell for homeowners between early drought in the spring and then the fungus. The fungus was out of control. It was everywhere. It, it wiped out my tomatoes. I saw fungus on my driveway. It was on my roof. What slowing down the growth means is that the plant reserves more into its roots, which gives it a better chance to fight the good fight later on when your disease and your, you know, all the, those. So it stores energy and it stores energy, helps it fight, you know, and it's ready to go. Makes a stronger plant for when disease activity happens a little bit down the road. It's good against leaf spot. It helps with dollar spot, different diseases where, you know, a, a plant works really hard in the spring. So if you can slow it down a little bit and it doesn't have to work so hard on upgrowth and it can store some of the stuff you've done from the year before, it's going to be out. It's kind of like your marathon analogy that you like to use with, uh, with lawn care is yeah. it, it, it reserves your energy. So we need a blast of energy to win the race. You can't. You gotta, it's there. Yeah. yeah. And also, it, you know. By restricting the upgrowth, it helps produce deeper roots, which also help the fight. If your root system's running deeper, then 
when you get into the summer months when it's hot and dry, there's something there. Well, and that leads us to our next thing. It helps reduce heat stress. Heat stress. Yeah. Hmm. So, By having a deeper root. You know, that's how it, how it helps. I mean, the stronger your root system is, the more heat resistant it's going to be. And the deeper it can be, the, the further it is away from the surface. Just makes perfectly good sense. You know, as a homeowner, I think most people sometimes confuse heat stress with with basically um, drought and then the, the sun and they're they're not necessarily all the same um, how does uh, how does this help with uh, being more drought tolerant if it's not if it's not growing up it's retaining the water in its plant also in the plant you know so it's that's also going to help it you you're, you're keeping more water in the plant so if you're not cutting water off of the plant, that's also going to help your your turf stress from from drought. So what I mean, but how is heat and drought and the dog days of summer when the sun's beating up? They're not necessarily all the same thing, are they? No, no. I mean, you can like say say you're looking at a parkway where heat is generated more, you know, more heavily, like the area between the. For those who don't call it a parkway, the area between the sidewalk and, and the street, mm -hmm. okay? Um, a lot of those times, you're going to generate more heat because you have more concrete around. Yeah. Right? And so you're going to see that go more dormant or whatever. Why? Because it's under heat stress along with I see. a dryness. Cool season grasses can tolerate heat to a certain point, and then they're going to start going dormant. They're going to protect itself again taking its water, putting it in the root. But it, you'll, like, say say you go to somebody's house and you see a fine line right next to the, to the street where maybe there's imperfections in the grade, rock underneath it from, you know, developing either the sidewalk or the street, and it's not deep enough, and it's sending heat back up at the root system and shriveling it. So sometimes it is a heat generated problem okay it gets too hot in the summer your lawn goes dormant now usually that's in conjunction with no rain because the rain the water usually will allow it to be through that if if you know there's enough water around the heat so they can be correlated but they're also independent. they're all correlated yeah but yeah i mean it's it, you know if you get a nice rainfall after a hot day then generally you probably don't see the heat stress because it takes stress back off of it I think our next uh, our next benefit is kind of like the same is very similar to the weed control where uh, when you use it it reduces thatch buildup and thatch is not your friend for a healthy yard. Yeah, and you know I guess some of the horizontal growth thing we were talking about earlier you got to watch how you say that because the horizontal growth really is the thatch um, versus vertical growth which is depth of roots oh so thatch is not the dead grass that falls over necessarily thatch is the rhizomes that are filling it has not it, it's basically as you feed a a lawn okay mainly primarily a bluegrass lawn but as you feed that over time the rhizomes spread and fill in and create this area of dead and living material and those plants are being choked out over time. So you got, you know, it's it's a developing thing. You know, it's that's why you aerate and do things like that. But the next one I think is really important for anybody. A lawn is meant to be used and have fun. And when you have a family, nothing can beat having a great lawn. And your grass growth regulators actually make your yard more tolerant for the kids to be able to play on it and have pets and to live life. Yeah, and it, by being stronger plant, that's that's really where you know the the regulators help with that. Now you have to be careful a little bit with regulators coming out of uh, out of the spring on say as you're as you're using them and or I should say coming out of winter into spring, you've got to allow the lawn to recover. Okay, say you got a heavy wear area outside your front door. You gotta let that grass grow up a little bit. You've got to give it time to start growing before you 
So there's a certain amount of understanding and education that comes with <coughs> using it correctly. It's not something you just want to throw it out there and randomly, because there is some re, some things you need to know about using it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You, know, you gotta pay attention to say growing day units. You want to wait till a certain point before you start spraying it. Um, you want that lawn to have some upgrowth in the in the early part of the spring to recover from any kind of winter damage. You don't want to just start hitting it with uh, growth regulators right away. You want to give it a little time to come up, start growing, and then do that. Now, they say it saves you money. Why does a, a, a grass growth regulator save an individual money? It saves you money because you're not mowing it as much. You know, I mean, really, not watering as much either. Not right? watering as much. You know, a, a growth regulator is saving you money, especially, you know, like in a commercial sense. If you were doing it on a commercial property, I mean, if you're mowing less, you're being charged less. Right. Or if you're, you know, mowing less on a homeowner, maybe you hire somebody to come in and mow your lawn. Well, if you're mowing every, you know, it doesn't need mowed for every, say, 10 to 14 days versus every five you know or six it's going to end up reducing the number of most for a season so yeah it can save you money well and in preparing for the podcast i was doing a little bit of research on it and and the some of the information i saw out there was that you have to buy it in large quantity and by the time you use it all um it's it, it, it's already expired and one of the benefits of working with a professional lawn care is that you're using it fresh because you have a lot of properties and but in your case, you're making this part of your culture of permagreen because you believe in it. Um, and this is part of your 50th anniversary celebration. What, what What's going on with that? No, uh, just I feel like it's important to kind of take care of the customer a little bit with that. Um, your way of showing respect and appreciation to the customer is... To give them a growth regulator this year <laughs> if you're on a full program. So you're giving your loyal customers less time mowing... To show your love for them, less a little less time mowing, uh, a little more plant health. It's just another way of trying to um, address the needs. I think of where I want to go in the future with our program, um, where the, you know uh, it's important. I think to ensure that we keep growing and understanding where we're going. For our customers' best interest. So, and so, but I you're not charging offer, for that this year. I'm not charging for that this year, or or I'm charging a reduced cost on limited program. So, so if somebody is a so loyal if customer, you're, if you're doing say four applications, we're doing it basically for what it costs me to to put it out there. If you're doing a full program of service, I'm actually if you're getting six applications here, it's just being incorporated. We are using it on. Your first or second treatment, depending on timing. You know, and you've you've made it very clear that there's a lot of bogus claims that a lot of lawn care companies will do, where they'll they'll tell you that they're giving you a free visit, uh, but they don't do anything when they come out, or they say they're including an application that's buried into it. This is a true incentive because you're charging, you're not charging for it, but yet they're getting something that would be probably pretty expensive if they did it, and they're saving money from not cutting as much, not watering as much. That sounds like a great way to celebrate. Permagreen's 50th anniversary. Yeah, and I can't wait to see how it works out. <laughs> well, and I think the other thing that's kind of cool about it is you are Northwest Indiana's original lawn care. You, you've been in, the, the Permagreen's been doing this longer than anybody, yet well, with you're the, the, yeah, you're as the far progressive as, uh, thought leader moving forward. Yeah, as far as the original lawn care companies to this area, um, yeah, Permagreen's been around since 74, so... You start thinking about the only other ones around here at the time, I think, were Cap's Green Lawn, which are, you know, God bless Bob Cap, and I, he was around for a long time, and they're not here anymore. That well, let's not get ahead of ourselves, around. because in, our, uh, in another podcast, we're going to talk about the history of Permagree, and what things look like in the early 70s, and now what they look like today, and how the lawn, in, lawn care industry has changed. But until then, they'll have to stay tuned for that one. Uh, so, Steve, thanks a lot for talking about uh, grass growth regulators and how it can help homeowners, especially those that are full-season plan customers of Permagreen. 
So yeah. if somebody wants to learn more about grass growth regulators, also called lawn growth regulators, also called plant growth regulators, <laughs> you can contact us at 219-462-3210 or hop on our website at www.perma-green.com. So you guys still use the phones? Oh yeah, I got girls answering the phone every day. Huh. Well, thanks, Steve. It's been a real joy having you here today. And thanks for sharing the future of Permagreen with their grass growth regulators. Thanks, thanks Jano. Thank Have you. a great day. <laughs> Thank you.